everybody, Peter Diamandis here, founder and executive chairman of the XPRIZE Foundation. Welcome to the Million Dollar Next Gen Mass Challenge. Today, we're awarding $1 million to the Next Gen Mass Challenge finalist team who has invented a face mask that not only protects you from COVID-19, but is the most comfortable and the most functional and the most stylish. everyone, and welcome to XPRIZE Presents, The Million Dollar Mask. I'm your host, Jim Cramer, host of Mad Money on CNBC. When masks became necessary in our daily lives, my co-sponsor and friend Mark Benioff and I realized that we needed something better and that young people around the world would have the answer. Tonight, the top five finalists in the Million Dollar XPRIZE Next Gen Mask Challenge each deliver a 60-second pitch on how their mask design overcomes the top barriers to mask wearing to a panel of celebrity judges and industry experts. After the presentations, we will reveal which of these young innovators will win today's prizes. $10,000 for our special People's Vote Award, $250,000 each for our two category winners, the Future Forward Award and Mask Appeal Award, and last, $500,000 for the grand prize winning team. Our judging panel is an all-star lineup of industry executives who can be evaluating the top five finalists on criteria such as functionality and accessibility, but also looking to see who has that X factor in their design to really get the public to change the way we think about wearing masks. Let me introduce the judges and where they're from. First, June Ambrose and Summer Chamblin. June is a creative director, author, costume designer, celebrity style plus hashtag rock mom, and social media maven. And Summer is a Gen Z entrepreneur and daughter of June Ambrose. Next, Suzanne DeBianca, Chief Impact Officer, Salesforce. Then, Ashish Dewanji, President, Live Doll Performance Material. Then there's Garrett Gerson, CEO, Calamigos Ranch and founder of Variant. Brian Hovey, Vice President of Marketing and Commercial Excellence, Honeywell, Heather Hughes, Whoop Vice President and General Merchandise Manager, Seasonal General Merchandise and Photo at Walgreens, Dr. Kimberly Prather, Distinguished Chair in Atmospheric Chemistry and Distinguished Professor at Scripps Institution of Oceanography and the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at University of California, San Diego. Then there's Denise Rutherford, Senior Vice President of Corporate Affairs, 3M. And finally, Dr. Eric Viren, Professor, UCSD Department of Neurosciences, Director of the Arthur C. Clarke Center for Human Imagination. Now, I have to tell you what these teams have experienced. XPRIZE launched this global competition in July, and in just under two months, we received record participation with 1,000 teams from 76 countries with the same idea, to build a better mask. We reviewed over 400 eligible applications, including a reference from a teacher or professor. Remember, these are just kids ages 15 to 24 and selected our top 25 teams. Then our partners and friends at 3M and Honeywell, the titans of the mass manufacturing industry, met with each team to determine how prototypes could be developed, leading us to our top 10 semifinalist teams. With the support of Lidol, the PPE filtration experts, 3M and Honeywell produced physical prototypes in weeks, just record time, during a pandemic yet, with their already outstanding quotas for daily mask making. Once we had our top 10 teams, we opened to the public to vote on their favorite semifinalist mask design. They were also evaluated by celebrity judges on their X factor of coolness, leading us to the top five finalist teams whom you will meet today. Now let me introduce you to our semi-finalists. Team ID Mask. This is our why. Doctors and nurses are tying leaky masks as tightly as possible, leading to cuts and scars on their faces while fighting COVID. The biggest problem with masks is that they leak. Viruses can leak in through the gaps, which endangers us all. And it fogs up our glasses. The ID mask creates a 100% airtight seal made of an adhesive silicone polymer around the outer edge. 
This means no leaks, and that makes our mask a game changer. The medical grade adhesive is Gummy Bear Soft, peels off painlessly, and is so strong that ear straps are no longer needed. It's the mask of the future. Our disposable mask eliminates the chances of touching a contaminated mask the next day, so doctors and the public can use it. It costs less than a dollar to produce, and we'll have different colors and designs to make them fashionable. Please, help us make this a reality. Lena, congratulations. That's I gotta say, you've made it to the top five. That's a great video. Um, you know, my first question is, uh, just to kind of start things off, is can you tell us a little bit about the whole um, kind of next gen mass challenge, like evolution with you and your team? Uh, well, we started um, by cutting out paper scraps and like just sticking on our face and seeing like what would work and what, what would not. Um, before we even got to uh, the silicon adhesive, like we were testing out a bunch of different materials. Like um, I know some people were using double-sided tape and um, I actually mm -hmm. cut up uh, one of those silicon bras, the, the sticky uh, strapless silicon bras. And it was just applying the thin, thinner parts uh, to the lining and we were just sticking it on. And then, um, yeah, it, it kind of just took off a little bit from there. There was a lot of uh, trial and error, uh, but me and my team were able to really like work through it. We were really concerned about um, leakage. Well, that was a huge one and secondary transmission. And that's why we made our mask disposable. Have you thought about how you would package this particular product? Okay, um, so the product will be able to fold flat like a sheet, and then it will be uh, portable. So you can just slip it into your pocket or your handbag and take it with you on the go. Uh, I haven't thought about um, exactly what the packaging would look like, just something that will help keep the uh, package um, flat. It is definitely a, a, a difference from other masks that are out there. Um, but one of the things that, I'm, that I study is how, we fish, how effective they are at filtering things. And the weak link, I know that the material has been tested, um, but what, how do you know, like you were saying, it doesn't leak at all. Um, how, do, how, how do you know that? Have you been able to test that anyway? I mean, how do you know it's leak tight? Because that, if you have one little leak, the rest of the material doesn't, won't matter as much, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what exactly what we're trying to prevent. So um, the silicone adhesive is going to stick to your skin pretty um, firmly, but not to a point where it will hurt you. So it uh, completely make the seal all around, and you can test this with like a breath test. So if you uh, it in like especially like now that the weather is cold, we've been uh, doing some breath tests. Uh, just so we can make sure that um, the air doesn't go upwards to fog up your glasses and it doesn't leak out this way or that way. Question is around facial hair and uh -huh. the adhesive and how that might work with facial hair and if that was considered and, um, and how you'll overcome that particular obstacle. And then I'll, I'll pause and ask you my second. <laughs> okay. So for facial hair, we did really think about it and we did come to the conclusion that long facial hair is not going to work very well with this mask. In order for the silicon seal to completely be 100% airtight, there needs to be no obstruction, especially around uh, the chin and jaw area. So um, we decided that a little bit of stubble is okay, but generally the user should be clean shaven. So what are you thinking about retails and, and why a customer would, um buy this mask uh, at whatever those retails are that, that you would be recommending. And of course the retailer sets that um, over say an ear loop mask and the purpose of this versus kind of your standard ear loop mask that would be disposable and less expensive. As for how we want the, pr the mask to be priced, we don't have an exact price for it just yet, but we do know that we want these to be um, as cheap as they can be. Uh, making sure that we still have enough funds to create more. Um, they only cost a dollar to produce because um, the silicon seal itself only costs around 50 cents per mask. And uh, current N95 masks only take about 50 cents to produce. So altogether, like around a dollar. Um, you know, I had a question around 
Yeah, as you were talking about using the or having this for consumers, everyday people like us, um, you know, how how are you thinking about things like um, the ability to talk and like and how does the shape and the adhesion impact someone's ability to talk and communicate? And then also, um, if you're thinking about like eating or or drinking, being you know taking it off, putting it back on. Is the adhesion such that you can do that and still maintain the seal or would you need to go and, and get a new mask? Great question. Um, I would love to answer this question. So um, one thing I, ha I, I forgot to mention is that we're going to be having two different masks, one for consumers and one is the medical N N95 that I mentioned earlier. So the consumer version is going to uh, be above 80% filtration so that it's protective and it's still breathable and definitely comfortable enough to wear every day for the regular consumer. Um, for talking, we uh, generally for like, if you're, you, if you have your entire jaw like open, it's going to affect a little bit, but we are going to be working with that uh, with the manufacturer. Um, but so far, just like a little bit of talking, like regular talking, like everything's going to be okay. Uh, for the part about uh, taking it off to eat and drink, uh, we will be uh, working with the adhesive manufacturer to adjust the stickiness so that the mask can be reapplied multiple times throughout the day and can be worn throughout the entire duration of the day. Lena, I love that you were considerate about the straps and because quite often, um, you know, the straps are bruising behind professionals' ears. They're wearing them for a long time. Even, you know, just consumers, everyday people walking the streets. I love that you have eliminated that aspect. And even uh, the great. glasses with the masks, like it yeah. hurts if you have glasses on and you're trying to have the straps on, like it's very uncomfortable yeah. long-term. So I think it was a really good idea. I have little mouse ears and masks do not stay on me. So great. thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Dr. Kim. For this virus, the reason we wear masks is to largely to protect others, the emission, what's coming out of people. And the surgeon, I think it's the same. You don't want your, they don't want the surgeon's breath to go into wounds and other things. So it's going the other direction. So, you know, to, so then that calls the question, you know, how well the silicon will hold if you're breathing out, if you have some exertion, you know, it's, you're gonna, you could be pushing and that could create gaps. Have you thought of, because I mean, when you get ready to test it, you're gonna have to test it. You can test it, it should work in both directions, but I can see where I wonder how sensitive, how, how strong, the silicon holds that you wouldn't get because just one little leak will, you know, that's where all the air will go and the aerosols will flow through and, you know, they'll leak out and that's what we don't want. So have you thought about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for the prototypes that I wore for around seven hours, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't experience any leakage around the uh, area, but I, I can understand where your concern is coming from. So we've decided to make parts of the inner lining thicker, especially around like the inner cheek and around like the nose and the inner um, right here and um, right here along the jaw. So we're going to thicken those areas to make sure that you get a really good stick. That way um, when you're talking or when you're wearing it uh, for long periods of time, I know surgery can last for many, many hours uh, that will uh, definitely hold up and um, no leaks will be created. Okay, well, I'll just put in one plug. When you get ready to do the leak tests, you, the way you want it to look, what you want to do for this particular virus is, is when people speak, they're producing aerosols all the time. And those will leak out. And so there are ways to measure those very easily. So when you get to that point, you can let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to help you. Awesome. I really look forward to contacting you when we're ready. Lena, thank you. Congratulations. Um, thank you so you've much. You've done an amazing job. Thank you for explaining your product. You answered some, some great questions. Uh, gave us a lot of insight um, behind your mask, the design, your team. I mean, what a fantastic team you all, you, you, you've assembled and put together. Team Polaire, USA. 25 Johns Hopkins University engineering students from four countries and 14 states came together to create a mask with changeable parts. Remember to use our first experiences living in 14 states and 4 countries, we realize that no single mask can meet everyone's needs. Sometimes you need a clear mask, sometimes you need an 85 mask, and other times a simple, breathable mask will do. 
That's why we created a flare mask. It's a modular platform capable of adapting to your unique needs. Our mask frames are comfortable silicone that's magnet for seamless swapping to different attachments. Our clear body attachment and bottom facing filter allow your air and your voice to pass through while maintaining an unaffected view of your face. Our standard body attachment and its flexible skeleton support your choice of filter and folds when not in use. The player mask is the only mask to fully meet the diverse needs of our population and overcomes all tough concerns identified by XPRIZE. In addition, our team of 24 has a drive and initiative to take our mask to market. In a week, this competition will end, but COVID-19 will not. If you're a player, you not only have the right mask, but also the right team to meet the challenge and give the world the next-gen mask it needs. Hi, I was just going to say that first, I really like your mask. I think it's actually a really cool design, and I love that it's clear. You can actually still see the person talking, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if it comes in different sizes, because my face is kind of small, and most masks don't fit my face. Yeah, that's a wonderful question. So our mask frame that you can see here, we designed it from publicly available data from 2,000 facial scans. So it fits a lot of people perfectly, but we are working on a smaller facial size. And because there's no publicly available data for that, we're going to work on data collection for smaller sizes. So I have a younger sibling. He's unfortunately remote learning um, from middle school right now. But we're hoping to do facial scans for children and make this perfect shape that can fit all of them. Because one of the issues we found with a lot of other masks where there's no piece that you can adjust is that you don't dress it correctly or you don't dress it properly and it fogs your glass, it creates all these issues. So we're going to create one solution that can work for everybody. So that's definitely in the works. You know, given that you are going to be able to use it multiple times, is the material, like, will you be able to disinfect it? Or how, how would you go about cleaning the mask? Yeah. Uh, so part of our design is that we completely changed um, how a mask should be. So traditional surgical masks are disposable. They're low quality materials. They're meant to be just thrown away. But since we have a reusable design that can basically serve at hundreds of surgical masks, we're able to invest in higher quality materials that can be re-sanitized relatively easily. So for example, our frame will be a medical grade silicone. So you can wipe it with a Clorox wipe relatively easily. And our clear body, it's gonna be sterilizable as well. So you can just do a simple Clorox wipe on it. Um, and in our carry case that we're gonna have for these different attachments, we're gonna have a small pocket for these sanitizing materials. So you could have a few Clorox wipes or a few sprays and handy just to clean it throughout the day. I, I study aerosols um, and I look at masks and how they how well they filter. Um, that's something I've been paying a lot of attention to. And so a um, couple of questions. A, a regular mask, um, you know, like a surgical mask or an N95, you have that total area that the air is pulled through that's filtering. And so I'm wondering how, you know, I guess I'm wondering how you chose the size of the filter. It only goes through one part, correct? Like, especially for when you have the, the clear frame, it's only going to have a, the smaller filter. And I guess what I'm wondering is how, how did you choose that size? And, and as, you know, moisture and things go back and forth, it seems like it, the airflow could be affected. Um, is that, have you looked into that or thought about that? I mean, just, I'm just curious how you chose it. Yeah, uh, really, really is definitely a huge point that we've been considering. So for our standard body, it's of course no issue because the entire surface area is a filter. Mm -hmm. Especially for the clear body, it's been a right. huge concern about where you put the filter because you put it in yep. the front and yep. box space. So we're considering either the sides or the bottom. And we ran sol uh, simulations in SolidWorks software to kind of see flow simulations. And we determined that if you place it down but curving upwards, mm -hmm. you can get a large majority of the breathability and benefits. And there's very little dead zones within the mask. So it's been um, optimized through um, the SolidWorks engineering software. And we've also been talking to professors to make sure that we're running the simulations properly and that our uh, our design is data driven. Great, that's a that's a great answer. Um, just one more question: Since you have the part, you know the parts that are coming off and going back on, it seems like there's you know one of the weak links of a, any mask is how well it seals. And so, have you done any sort of tests on the sealing? You actually have, I think, it's sort of two surfaces that have to seal, as opposed to just normally you have the one against your face. But you'll have the one against your face, and you'll also have the one when you take the component off. So how, how are you um, checking the seal that you know, you're not having leakage? Mm -hmm. um, of course, since we're working remotely, we can't have lab testing. But since we designed um, the silicone frame based on uh, facial data from 3,000 people, uh, it does fit well on a variety of people. Everyone tested, there's no large gaps. Uh, it, lab testing is something that we, that we want to do in the future, but just from a visual assessment that there's no major gaps along any part of the frame. 
And the major benefit of um, attaching to something like this is that because you want to keep it flexible as well, these pieces are going to be like a soft silicone material that has embedded mags inside. So as it puts down, um, it's going to form almost like a, like a gasket that's self-compressing because these magnets will be pushing down the rubber material against the hard plastic of the frame. Mm -hmm. So that way you create a tight seal and it's not going anywhere because of the magnets are, are pretty strong, but also pretty small. Hi, great, congratulations. Um, I, I really like the modularity as well. I'm wondering, I heard you had a big team working on this. So I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your teammates and what it was like doing a project like this in a virtual environment. Yeah, so I think our large team size, 24 right now, it's definitely a stand-up feature of um, kind of our entire team throughout the entire process. And it really has shaped our design philosophy because our members come from 14 states and four countries. So we have a great diversity experience from all corners of the world. And so part of that is that we realized that no single mask can meet everyone's needs. So it's been really exciting to have brainstorming sessions. So we would break up to small rooms to brainstorm and we have all these different cool ideas that we never would have thought of, just one person alone. And then we came back together to realize that, you know, we have to meet a mask that meets, that meets everyone's needs. So our team has designed a solution that works for our team. And since our team is a microcosm of the larger world, it works for everybody. So that really has shaped our design process. Very cool. And then what, and as you interchange the pieces, which I think is a phenomenal idea to be able to go from you know, cloth to a clear you know, uh, piece, how do you ensure that it seals correctly uh, over that um, silicone piece? Yeah, so um, on our mass frame, we have a variety of magnets across and every position. And then because this piece is rigid on the very front, so the back of it, it's soft against your face, but the front of it's rigid. So this is gonna be a consistent shape across any attachment. And the back of these are also relatively rigid. So every time you use it, it's a perfect fit. So um, an example is like um, Apple's MagSafe, for example, where the magnets are risen per uh, perfectly. So then they're self-aligning as well. And because of that, if you're off a little bit, it auto adjusts and makes a perfect fit uh, when you swap different materials and attachments. Got it. And just one follow up question to that. Are you thinking about unique designs, patterns, um, you know, as you bring, especially not the silicone, you know, the clear one, but rather the, the cloth based one? Are you thinking about, you know, some fun, adding some fun to those components? Yeah. Um, it's funny that you bring that up because I actually put a I'm not sure if you should show this with my camera, but there's a sticker of a, of a mustache on here. So this is just a sticker I had lying around that I thought might be appropriate. And as you wear it. <laughs> great. <laughs> you are thinking about it. That's wonderful. Tell me a little bit about how long you were able to wear a mask. And did you notice any difference in comfort uh, in a couple of ways for like from the beginning of the time you wore it till the end? Did it change in terms of how comfortable it felt? And was there a difference between the clear mask and then the different feet filter media that your team developed? That's a good question. So I had been wearing testing it. So um, for each mask, I've been able to get on two hours of mask of wearing time. And I found that it's it's honestly is much more comfortable than surgical mask because um, I wear this grocery shopping. And uh, because when I used to wear a surgical mask, it would always block my glasses 100% of the time. But since wearing both the standard and the clear versions, I haven't had any glasses fogging. And it's been leaving no marks either because we designed it to be equal pressure among your face. So you're not gonna get certain um, areas of high pressure that would leave marks in your face. And also um, kind of, of, no, of interesting is that uh, the clear body stayed anti fog the entire time, just from my simple hand soap treatment. So um, after hours of wearing there, it's, it's comfortable to me. And there's also no issues with any of the other components as well. Well, excellent. Jerry, congratulations to you and your team. Can we see that team one more time? And, you know, yeah, I'd like to say. On and All right, great job, team. Thank you, and a wave. USA, unique design to tackle breathability made from young innovators based out of Hawaii. We need better masks and lots of them. And our unique fabrication methods make that possible using one sinusoidal cut to produce two continuous streams of organically shaped mask blanks with zero waste. This is good for our fabricators, environment, pocketbooks, and our communities. The Merlin mask doesn't look like a standard mask because it isn't one. Concentric corrugations allow us to finely tune the subtle balance between filter area, trapped internal volume, and the area of skin covering. 
inspired by the nose, were also able to induce a flow of air away from the face, just like Mother Nature intended. But a mask is only as good as its seal, and our seal is great. It gets better the harder you breathe, and its narrow profile means little compression is required, and that's comfy. Our prototypes work. Sibilant and plosive sounds can be easily heard, and we didn't stop refining when we hit submit three months ago. We're eager to work with the excellent partners already engaged by XPRIZE to get these masks on the faces of those who need them. Brandon, it's uh, great to have you on, on, the, on the program here, and congratulations. Congratulations to you and your team for being finals in the XPRIZE contest. Uh, really innovative design, and uh, you know, I'd love to kick things off with our panelists here. And um, I, you know, I wanted to touch on one of the points you hit on, which is around sustainability. You know, this is a big problem with masks that we have today is, uh, is that they do create a lot of waste. And so my question is, how do you think about the trade-offs around sustainability and performance as you were thinking about your design? Every, everything we've done here, every design choice has a, uh, a functional and an aesthetic impact. And these concentric corrugations, they allow us to maintain a lot of filter area. You can see if I pull this out, there's a lot of filter area in there, um, while at the same time reducing the amount of skin that's covered by the mask. Mm. Um, these corrugations also allow us to maintain a large distance um, from the lips to the closest pieces of fabric, which mean that um, the voice can be easily heard. Um, I mentioned plosive and sibilance in that previous video. Those, those uh, sounds are the hardest to preserve when you're putting something over the face because they need time to develop. Like if I go puh, puh, puh versus puh, 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 it's much harder to hear. How, how do you test? You've tested the um, filtration efficiency of the material. How are you going to test the, um, you know, that it's not leaking? Right. So, so the testing we've done because of cost limitations and access to equipment um, has been, you know, simple things like uh, a match or a candle, putting on glasses, you, you're feeling cold air coming in. Um, you know, we looked into to getting a testing hood, um, but didn't do that. Uh, but that, that's one of the things that we really need to do first and foremost. Um, if we're fortunate enough to, to win the X prize here. See, you know, it's really not obvious from the top of the mask that it wouldn't fog your glasses. So, it, you know, I, when I look at the mask, it, it looks like a lot of other masks. So what is so special that this particular design does not fog your glasses? There's, there's two reasons. Um, the first is a robust seal. Um, if the perimeter seal is good, you don't have leakage, um, and in principle, that wouldn't fog your glasses. But there's more to it than that. Even if you have a perfect seal, as your exhaled breath goes through the filter media, it's slowed down and made turbulent and, and lingers. Um, so even if you have a perfect seal on your mask, in the right conditions, if you're not moving or there's airflow, you'll still get glasses fog. And that's where the, the corrugations come in and concentrating the majority of the filter media down and low from around the lower lip to the bottom of the chin. Um, those, are, those are the two big ways that we uh, work against glasses fog. Um, Brandon, I, as someone who runs the climate action programs for Salesforce, I uh, really wanna say here, here on the sustainability aspect of it. And it made me think from a go-to-market perspective you may want to think about partnering with a retailer that is sort of strong in the sustainability space, like, you know, Estella McCartney or, um, you know, another like Adidas or Nike. There's a lot of retailers are um, wanting to make a bigger move in this space. So partnering with them to sort of take it to market might be a good next step for you to explore. Your mask kind of looks like a jet engine nozzle inlet there, and it looks uh, looks very aerospace, aero airflow control. So, uh, uh, yes, liking that very that very cool design. 
However, I'm actually a physician and uh, uh, a human tester. So what I'm interested in is your human factors or your human testing process. So you've talked a lot about design features. Tell us about how your team is going to uh, finalize and uh, test your products uh, for human acceptance. Well, there's only three of us. And we have done the uh, most, I guess, market research uh, we've been able to do, which has been, been a lot. We've made prototypes and we've given them to the people that we can access in a safe way throughout COVID and said, hey, you know, what do you think of this? How does it fit you? Put your glasses on. Are they fogging up now? Um, and got a lot of feedback that way. Hey, Brandon, one thing to consider as you move forward is the durability of this design. It's great that it's got that corrugation and that flexibility. If this mask is going to be reused, um, how, you know, we have to really think that how to train the user on how to refold it after they put it through the wash or something. So I think that's going to be really important to make sure that that, that it's durable enough to go through the wash and to, to get back into the right shape every time. Yes, yeah, so, so Brandon and uh, to the rest of uh, Team Merlin, thank you. A really exciting design. Um, you guys have clearly put a lot of thought and energy into this and uh, look forward to see where you, where you can go with this. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, some fantastic feedback. Team Niger Force, Nigeria. Two friends focusing on comfort and helping their community. My name is Ifele. And I'm Samuel. We are the co-creators of the NF mask. According to XPRIZE, one of the major reasons people do not wear masks, in spite of its effectiveness, is the discomfort in wearing and breathing. Other reasons are affordability, expression, and eco-friendliness. Our mask solution actually combines comfort and efficiency. We believe that the next-gen solution should not be complex, rather simple and unobtrusive. We are starting a revolution to make mask wearing not just a norm, but a delight. Our NF mask is a patent pending body face piece that is lightweight, transparent, efficient, and affordable. The uniqueness of our mask is its simplicity. Supporting our products means being a part of the life changing and generation defining solution, one that is well placed to be lucrative in this demand saturated time. Help us start the revolution. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to kick it off with a question. You talked about comfort. so. Tell me a little bit about how long you've been able to wear this mask and have it be comfortable. It's not really obvious, honestly, that, a, that wearing something almost like a cup around your face would be comfortable for a long time. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, thanks for that question. I really appreciate being here. Um, so talking about comfort, we prototyped this. We did a form model in uh, 3D print, but we couldn't get the actual material. But well, um, the material that was used to prototype it from tanks to 3M is a silicon. It's a very flexible silicon material um, that is almost weightless. You can you can squeeze it, it deforms and goes, I mean, retains its form again. It's so weightless. I mean, the, the comfort is really, really incomparable. Can you talk a little bit about how do you clean it? Um, what's required? Um, how long does it last like that? Okay. Um, thank you very much once again. As um, regards the, user, the reusability, um, the mask can simply be cleaned with just mild soap and water. Or better still, it can simply be put in an ultraviolet scanner or an ultraviolet display to kill the germs and as well, you can still reuse it. And with the help of the replaceable filter, we hope you can replace the filter on a daily basis or on a bi-daily basis. So uh, you're, uh, you're in, um, in Africa, and can you tell us about uh, your, your team? How, how do you plan to reach out internationally uh, for your products uh, as you move this along? Um, thank you. I mean, th thanks to this, to this contest. Um, I, I haven't, I've never been... I never had it in mind that I'll be able to reach out to as much people as I've been able to reach out to in a short span of time as, as the project has elapsed. And there's been a lot of uh, uh, people reaching out and already, I mean, calling out or pre-ordering, so to say, from London, from New York, and saying, oh, we we'll need this, we we'll need that. So we believe that this is a product that is uh, 
universally required, I mean, in demand, and that it's not limited by the region, by the race, by the culture, by the ethnicity or one's gender. It's going to be um, globally accepted. We just need to position ourselves strategically such that we can find a very good, uh, a, um, a very good uh, channel to market this and make it acceptable. Um, one of the questions I have is, you know, you in a regular mask or surgical mask, you have air. I, so I, I study masks. So you have air that flows, you know, can flow through the whole, all the material, whereas this mask has one little region, right, where it can go through. And so it, it's the question I have is that puts a lot of like, if that starts to get a little plugged up, um, you know, over time, if the longer you wear it, then it's going to put more pressure on the seals and then you can get more leaks. And so, A, how long can you wear this? And how are you going to test, you know, how well it's holding up from a leakage perspective? Okay, thank you so much. That's a very insightful question. And I really appreciate that because that's one of the things that we are looking to take forward um, in the next stage of our prototyping and development. Um, as a matter of fact, the first um, prototype um, and test that was uh, done for us, uh, just tells us that we would we would need to increase the surface area of the uh, perforation. So yes, you have, it's really spot on to have noted that. And um, in terms of the pressure, you're really right about the pressure. So going forward, it would just be trying to be trying to find the balance uh, in terms of the surface area and uh, the the size of the mass, such that it doesn't really heat up and it's really breathable. But we are this close to it. Trust me. Samuel and Dio, could you tell us a little bit about the inspiration of the name and the brand design that you're wearing on your t-shirts? Um, we've come a long way and I, I, really, I really want to, to, to pay a very huge uh, abode and respect to everyone who's lost their life in the course of the civil unrest in Nigeria past couple of months. But one of the things that has spurred us to actually enter for this competition is trying to put our footprints on that global, global stage telling the world that yes, that we may be Nigerians, some things might not be perceived right, but deep down we still have, we, we have what it takes to compete on a global stage and to solve real world problems and also to contribute to, 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 to global advancement and development. So the name Niger Force is, um, Niger, Niger Force is the nickname for Nigeria. Yeah, people say, oh, Niger, you're from Niger, Niger, yeah. So Niger Force, Niger is the nickname for Nigeria. So the force is, um, sort of epitomizes the, 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 the strength of, of the youths and how, and how we fight, we, we wrestle. I mean, just share resilience through every, I mean, every um, roadblock and pitfalls that we find ourselves. We still try to, you know, push ourselves and keep going and, you know, put Nigeria on the map. So that's the journey, that's the name. Thank you. Team Niger Force, congratulations. Your, your design is really stylish. It's, yeah, and in addition to being stylish, it's simple, functional, and safe. I love the energy and the inspiration with how you all came up with this design. Uh, uh, here's where I would advise you as to what you should do next. Focus on three things. Focus on how you can bring scalability to reduce cost. That's point one. Point two, think about the packaging of the, of the shell for multiple uses. Are you going to give them a box to put the uh, shell in and reuse it every time? And third, think about the supply chain and availability of those uh, raw materials, the, the filter materials for the right shape. How are you going to constantly provide that supply chain for the user that buys the shell? Excellent job. You know, I'm really excited and, you know, I wish you the best of luck. So I have a question around the comfort of the mask. So I have, I live in Chicago area. It gets really, really cold in the winter and snowy and it gets really hot and humid in the summer. And I was thinking about the material and how comfortable will that be when it's hot and humid in that summer weather? Um, based on research, Silicon has been known to be one of the most friendly and most comfortable materials on the skin. So, aside that our mask is lightweight, aside that our mask, the straps 
gives you effort or gives you the opportunity to wind it around your year. And when you feel your years are getting numb and you just feel like doing something else, you can effortlessly change it to wind around your head on the go. You don't need to go around with an extra strap or go around with an, an additional accessory. It's just you, your mask, the strap, clip around your ear, or wind around your ear, clip around your head. That is all. Yeah. Hey, Dio and Samuel, thank you so much. Uh, just to wrap it up, it's a fantastic design. It's simple. It appeals to so many of us because we can see each other smiling. I, you've got yeah. beautiful smiles. It's great to thank see you. your smiles. It's what I miss most of having to wear a mask. So thank you. And that straw hole, again, I'll come back to that, being able to stay hydrated, you know, no matter what the temperature is. Um, you talked a little bit about doing design um, uh, changes. Good luck with that. You know, I know you've got some work to do on the design and that filter piece. So so keep up the good work. This is a, a very unique product and, and good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Team Luminosity Lab USA, a team from an Arizona State University student-run lab, created the Flow Mask. In a complex world, the answers to our most pressing challenges are simple. But when slowing COVID-19 is as easy as wearing a mask, how do we get the whole world on board? The answer is Flow Mask, designed for simplicity. Everyone loves fancy gadgets, but what we need right now is a mask that people will want to wear. Changing social norms takes years. We need a mask that looks like a common mask without all the issues that come with one. Tired of a hot, stuffy mask that fogs your glasses? Simple. Want something professional with style? Simple. Need to breathe easy while still protecting others? Simple. High-tech solutions can take years to be implemented. The flow mask is designed with one goal in mind, rapid adoption. A simple design with accessible materials and existing manufacturing processes means one thing, production at a global scale with ease. That's why the flow mask represents the next generation of masks, leading the charge in solving society's most pressing issues now, slowing COVID-19 and saving lives. Well, hi, Nikhil, and hi, Katie. Welcome to, uh, to joining us here, the judges. We are really looking forward to asking you some questions about your products. Um, but a big thank you. I, I know you guys have a, a team working on this, and I think you've done some honorable work even before the masks. And uh, so big congratulations to you on some of that technology capabilities that you built. First off, I, so I work in retail, so I immediately go to some commercialization questions. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious around what you're thinking around costs and retails and how you're going to uh, show our customers that this is a differentiated mask. What we've done is some very preliminary cost quotes uh, regarding manufacturing this at scale. We know that for a minimum order quantity of around 10,000 units, uh, we're looking at costs less than a dollar per mask for to produce the reusable version of this mask. And we suspect that we'll still remain under a dollar to produce um, as far as the disposable version is concerned, given that the light all material that we use is not particularly expensive and will still keep us under that dollar uh, cost for production. And so, of course, that is particularly important. Um, as one of the things in the video mentioned, you know, accessibility is particularly important to us. We want this mask to be available to everybody, and we think that we can offer it at a low price point uh, to which it will be accessible. Very helpful. Thank you for the clarity around the pricing and, um, you know, just being in the retail environment, I can say, um, study the pricing out there. You, if you're able to keep it under a dollar, you might even be able to um, Th think about two packs, three packs and, and stuff like that for customers. Congratulations, uh, Team Luminosity making the finals. Uh, you've, that's a really great achievement and we're super proud of you for uh, for getting so far. I guess I'm the I guess I'm the self-designated guy around this question. I'm a physician and I wear a mask all the time for work. And one of the things is the smell. I always am smelling my uh, smelling my mask. So what what does your mask smell like? I think, um, you know, a lot of that smell that you're talking about, right, is oftentimes smell that occurs because um, the air that you breathe through your mouth is reflected onto the same surface 
that you're breathing in with your nose. And so that's kind of the uniqueness about our bifurcated filtration chamber is that the air that you breathe from your mouth is inherently separate because of the design from the air you breathe through your nose. So regardless of whatever you've eaten that day, let's say, or whatever it is that you know could be coming out of your mouth, what you're gonna be smelling is constant fresh air coming from the nose part of the bifurcated filtration chamber. And so to hopefully answer your question, our mask smells clean all the time, whether you're running in it, whether you're, uh, you know, working and doing important things in the clinic or whether you're at home kind of just relaxing. <laughs> Thank all you. All right. So we're going to shift over to Kim and she's going to ask questions. Hello. Well, um, congratulations on uh, making it to this point. And um, I, uh, I really enjoyed actually uh, your presentation, your presentation that you gave. It was very clear and covered a lot of information. So you did great on that. It stood out. Um, so I, I study aerosols. Um, I look at how those pesky viruses get through masks in and out. And um, one thing that uh, that is known is, you know, the weak link of a, of a lot of masks is, you know, I know that you've tested the material. Um, and, but, but what about the seal? How, how have you, or are you testing um, to make sure, you know, the seal that that is holding so that you're not having viruses leaking out or in? Yeah, great question. And that's something we put a lot of deliberation into. Like, um, do we want something like a silicone seal or do we want kind of this typical more fabric? And in the end, we went with as good of a seal as like fabric and uh, this material can provide with this type of comfortable mask. So we have a chin elastic, we have adjustable elastic, so they can get it as like flesh through their face along with a very conforming nose bridge. Um, and then we, we chose that over silicone or another material because we have to think about people like Nick with beards uh, and, and then people who have uh, allergies or they just aren't, aren't ready for that material. That was really the big thing is, I mean, we're, we're hitting a peak right now, especially we're both in the United States. Um, we're, we just set a record the last couple of days for most cases, uh, most hospitalizations. So we were really focusing on a mask that we could get out there as soon as possible, that we could get as many people wearing as soon as possible. So we didn't want something that came off as new technology. We wanted something that looked like a fixed version of old technology that people would feel comfortable wearing um, and that people wouldn't feel like they have to stand out in the crowd or get questions about, but instead a cheap, incredibly accessible um, one that still got as good of a seal, um, as good as filtration efficiency and without the other issues yep. that come with the mask. Nikhil and Katie, congratulations. Um, it's, I mean, it's commendable that you guys made it this far. I love your mask. Uh, I love the point, some of the notes I took down are the fact that, you know, you are going to adopt a, um, an infrastructure that already exists so you can really get these masks out there quickly uh, and, and a scale. Um, you know, the, the one thing I ask you guys to look into is sustainability, especially as you are using cut and sew as a means to uh, create these masks. I think that's going to be really important because single use, single use uh, masks are becoming uh, incredibly taxing on our environment. Uh, the bifurcated chamber is a really interesting design. I mean, that is something that uh, currently is not always thought of when people are making masks. It's comfort, right? Um, how long you wear it. Uh, how long the wearer is going to keep it and keep it on. So I think that is, for me, that is a, um, that really sets you apart from a lot of the masks that, uh, that got presented on here today. And, you know, and the fact that you've gotten a lot of the testing and are actually to production ready. So, um, you know, COVID-19 is, is, you know, it's not slowing down here in the U.S. And uh, the faster we can get masks out to everybody is going to help curb the spread. So congratulations, love the mask, really love the bifurcated design. I think it's really, it's a really smart attribute and something that um, I would hone in in your marketing and really focus on that because uh, heat dissipation is such a big issue where people are wearing masks that um, they just become uncomfortable. So congratulations. Uh, team, I really liked your name, the flow mask. That's really a, a, a really good name, it's powerful. It's distinctive of how you come up with it. I also like the fact that you are thinking of alternate medical grade materials for filtration. But, but, you, but in this field where there are many people who think about medical grade filters and pockets for media, I think my advice to you in marketing this is to think about how will you cause the shift from people who are used to wearing the simple blue surgical masks 
or going on Amazon.com to find this alternate pocket masks to ship towards flow masks. Uh, you know, think about how you create a following for that. And if you do that, I believe flow mask has a very good potential. Again, congratulations for being in the top five. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. I will say, you know, what I'm hearing from you, you have innovation, right? So it's something very differentiated from the marketplace. You show, you show great agility having to, you know, deconstruct and reconstruct your mass based on feedback you received during testing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on top of that, just flexibility, you're able to change your fabrics uh, that are visible to the customer, which is going to give you a lot of opportunity to just even add other with the differentiation. So I really want to say it's incredible. And uh, I, I'm very thankful that we had the opportunity to hear all about it. So thank you. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with us today and uh, for your interest both in our mask and moreover, the work that you guys do every day to you know help our communities as we move through these difficult times. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Teams. My name is Kevin Plank. I'm the founder, executive chairman, and brand chief of Under Armour. I want to start by congratulating you on making it this far. The top five of the XPRIZE $1 million Next Gen Mass Challenge. That is a ton of money. So before we go any further, just everybody take a breath and understand what could be coming to you for our winners. I also have heard that XPRIZE received a record-breaking number of submissions from around the world. So each of you just being named a finalist is a massive accomplishment. Congratulations to you. This contest is the perfect illustration of the entrepreneurial spirit that runs in the veins of so many around the globe. I believe it is one of the greatest things that we can give to one another is that entrepreneurial spirit and belief and dream. It's a relentless focus on problem solving and turning ideas into action is that that's what any entrepreneur does is we solve problems. And it's with that same focus and tenacity that I actually founded Under Armour back in 1996. It's been 25 years since then. And I can tell you that from day one, support for our communities has been in our DNA. And that's even more true and even more important today. A great story of the, the pride that I have for our team is what we did when the pandemic began to set in back in February and March. We received a phone call from Johns Hopkins Hospital, and they said the number one issue they had wasn't a shortage of hospital beds, but it was PPE. And they asked if we could do anything about it. So through a partnership with Hopkins and finding a fabric that was domestically based that we could get to our cutting facility in Baltimore, we also needed to figure out how to manufacture after we cut this fabric into a a working mask, the, the design our team came up with was actually wasn't manufacturing at all, but was an origami design that could be hand assembled by hundreds of Under Armour volunteers giving tens of thousands of hours to build more than 5 million masks and gowns for Johns Hopkins and more than 40 surrounding hospitals. We then took that expertise and actually layered it into a commercial opportunity by building something called the UA Sports Mask which we're gonna build millions of units of this year and has become the top selling SKU for Under Armour of 2020. Adversity is certain guys. Our ability to be agile and to react to it is what makes us different. And that's what makes you an entrepreneur. So the problem that you're solving for today is in the face of a global pandemic that's impacted so many lives and is very important, exactly the most important of our time. What I've seen in your pitch films is so inspiring and it really captures the entrepreneurial spirit of this generation. And it gives me great hope for the future, seeing so many young and extremely talented problem solvers tackling this challenge head on. Luminosity Lab, Team ID Mask, Polair, Nyjah Force, 
Team Merlin, across the board, you guys impressed everyone, the judges, and I've been able to see the films also, and I would be just as curious about wondering who gets picked. Each one of you is worthy of winning, but we know that only can be a few. I want to tell you, you made the process incredibly difficult on the judges. And to those that are selected, congratulations. It's a big deal. But don't ever rest. Don't take this money. This is not the end line. This is just the beginning. Keep pushing. Just remember to always move forward. And to those who aren't selected, the message is the same. Never rest and keep pushing. It's a great sense of pride that you should have and confidence that you've gotten to this point. That's because it's bright entrepreneurs like you that are going to make the world great and that we are counting on you. Thanks, Kevin. Under Armour continues to change the game with their own sports mask, which, if you remember, sold out in less than an hour back in June, around the time this XPRIZE challenge launched. Their team has been an active challenge partner and provided innovation advice for these teams. Our hope is that our challenge winners have the same success. Okay, guys. Tonight, Mark Benioff and I are giving away $1 million with an added bonus award. Come on. We have four prizes tonight. $10,000 for our special People's Vote Award. $250,000 each for our two category winners, the Future Forward Award and the Mask Appeal Award. And last, $500,000 for the grand prize winning team. And the winner is Team Novus from India. Our first category tonight is the Future Forward Award, chosen by the panel of judges, the mask that really felt like it was taking us into where the future of mask is headed. Congratulations to Jerry, leader of Team Blair, for thinking outside of the box in their design. Team Blair is winning a total of $250,000. Thank you so much. Yeah, my, my team and I are absolutely ecstatic for this opportunity. We're really excited. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped us along the way, all of our mentors and everyone who's given us advice along the way. We're super excited to manufacture and patent and bring our masks to market. So thank you all. Thank you so much and congratulations. The second category is the Mask Appeal Award, given to the team who the judges believe would be the mask most widely adopted by the public. We hope to continue to see this team update their mask so that people all over the world can one day be wearing them. If Adaya and Samuel who make up the team Niger Force from Nigeria. You are the winners of the Mask Appeal Award and have won $250,000. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Firstly, I want to say a big thank you to the donors and sponsor, sponsors of this project, uh, Mark and Jim, um, to XPRIZE, the organizers, and to all the other supporters. You all are amazing, and we wouldn't have come this far without your help. Through and through, you guys have all been amazing. All we can say is we thank you. We in Nigeria are super, 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 super excited and really appreciative of this. And we really can't even portray or exhibit a little of excitement. This is not our real face. We are really trying to contain it, but thank you so much. And finally, there is the Million Dollar Mask Champion. The grand prize winner of the X Prize Next Gen Mask Challenge. The grand prize winner is Team Luminosity Lab. <laughs> oh my God. That thing for Team Luminosity Lab is Nikhil and Katie. Thank you so much to the X Prize team, to Jim, to Mark Benioff, uh, to Peter Diamandis. We are absolutely thrilled. And uh, we're so grateful to be receiving this award. We can't wait to keep uh, keep pushing these masks forward and doing what we can to help uh, prevent COVID-19. Thank you so much. Congratulations. We cannot wait to wear your mask and contain the scourge that is COVID-19. 
Congratulations to all our Gen Z winners. I'm so proud of you. Stay up to date on the teams and their journeys by visiting xprize.org slash mass and following at xprize on all social media platforms. Thank you and good night.